Hello, here's a tutorial for biped walking. This will be very similar to what I covered in class, but in the tutorial you'll be able to go over it more slowly and step by step by yourself. I've created a grass floor, and now I'm going to go to setup scene to add bipeds. I can use this generate random person button to generate a look that I like. I like him. And I'll make another one. Oh, I like her. Okay. Okay, so now I have two bipeds in my scene. I can go to edit my code. And as we talked about, instead of creating the walk behavior inside my first method, I'm going to create a biped level procedure for my walking. That way I can apply it to any biped. I'm going to call it the first step. And I'm going to add a do together wrapper because I want all of the motions in this first step of walking to happen together. It's going to consist of turning the right hip forward I'm going to turn it forward by 0.1, which I found to be a good walking value. And then I'm going to option click and drag to duplicate and turn the left hip backwards by the same amount. Let's see how this looks. Now, if I were to run it right now, I wouldn't see anything because I've created a general biped procedure. What I need to do in my first method is apply that procedure to one of my people. This adult person, first step. And let's see how it looks. And there he goes. He makes his first step with his legs. So let's add the arms by going back into first step. And I'll select the right shoulder. I'm going to turn the right shoulder to the left by 0.1. Option click and drag to duplicate. And I will get the left shoulder and turn it also to the left. And now let's see what our behavior does. Excellent. The legs and the arms move. Now that I have a generalized procedure, back in my scene, I can apply this to either of my bipeds, or both of them. So in my first method, I also have this adult person too, first step. So first, the person on the left will take a step, then the person on the right will take a step. Okay. Now you can, of course, add detail to your walking by adding uh, movement of the knees, ankles, elbows, wrists. We're not going to go into that level of detail right now, but I encourage you to do that in your own work. So once we've taken that first step, we need to continue walking. So I can take this entire procedure for the first step, and by control clicking it, I can copy it to the clipboard, which is here in the upper right. So I've just copied all of this work. I don't need to redo it. And I'm going to make another biped level procedure. And I'll call it walk. OK. I can go up to the clipboard here and drag the whole procedure in. And I'm now going to reverse the motions. I'm going to turn the right hip backward. Turn the left hip forward, turn the right shoulder to the right, turn the left shoulder to the right. I'm also going to increase the magnitude of each of these steps because remember the first step is just a half step, but these are going to be full steps. So I'm changing them all to point two. I'll go back to my first method. 
And in my first method, I can add the walk procedure. Now, a problem with our walk procedure, well, there's two problems. One, it's just the motion of walking. The characters aren't actually moving. We can solve that later. But let's just get the motion right first. If I duplicate using option click and drag this walk procedure, note what happens. He takes a first step, she takes a first step, and then he takes three more steps. One, two, three. Something very strange happens. Why is that? Well, that's because he's stepping with the same leg each time he's stepping. We need a way to switch legs. And as we looked at in class, we do that by means of making the walk procedure know which leg stepped last. So we add to biped a biped property. And that property is which leg. Since there are two legs on a biped, by definition, it can be a Boolean value, either true or false, left or right, one or zero. And we'll initialize it with true. Then we can use an if statement in our walk procedure and say if this dot which leg is true, then step forward with the left foot, option click and drag, and invert this when we're stepping with the other foot. So this says, if this dot which leg is true, then step forward with the left leg. Otherwise, in other words, if this dot which leg is false, step forward with the right leg. So, what we also have to do is change this value after each step. And here we conveniently have this set which leg. So we say, after the right leg steps forward, will set the value to false, which means the next time this procedure is run, it will run here. And using option click and drag to duplicate, we will again set this dot which leg to true after this has run. So this will be what's called a toggle or a flip-flop. The first time it's run, it will run this. The second time it's run, it will run this. The third time, this. The fourth time, this, etc. Let's see that work. We go back to my first method. And now when we take three steps, we see the legs alternate properly. Now we can add in the actual movement. In the class example I gave you, I added the movement in my first method to show you a different way, more than one way to do it. Principle, I'm going to add the movement inside the biped procedures. I'm going to have the biped move forward by 0.25 when taking the first step, and then move forward by 0.5, because these steps are twice the magnitude, in the main walk routine. And now we have a nice walking behavior. And since it's generalized in my first method, you can have either person walk. He takes three steps, she takes two. Now obviously to make the movement a little bit nicer, her first step should come before her later steps. And then at the end, we can have them both come to rest by using the straighten out joints procedure. 
he takes three steps, she takes two steps, comes to rest by straightening out joints, and he comes to rest by straightening out joints. So please go through this tutorial carefully. Make sure you understand the concept of creating biped level procedures and biped level properties. Make sure you also understand how the if statement functions within the walk procedure. Prepare this for a quiz on Monday and have a lovely weekend.